children in high fire danger areas um, need to be given information. Disaster resilience is all about knowing. In 2009, we had nothing left. The school was destroyed in, in the Black Saturday bushfires. That is probably what has led us to be involved in this program and, and where we are today. When we were told that we were going to start the CFA program, I was very excited about all the fun things we were going to do. It was a good opportunity for our local schools because not many schools do this. A few weeks into the program, we had an excursion to Yang Yin Reservoir. We got in the fire trucks and headed off. And on the way there, in one of the trucks, there was a singing competition. <laughs> That's the donkey. Eurovision in the back here. <laughs> Where's the radio? <laughs> we learnt about the whirling hygrometer and what it does. Two things we need really important that we're going to measure here with this is the air temperature and also the humidity. So in the find fuels percentage meter, you first of all have to find some different leaves or grass, a dry leaf and a leaf full of more moisture. And then we have to cut it up and put it in a little like grinder. And then we have to tighten it up. So what that's doing now is compressing the leaves against the sensor. It comes up with the percentage of moisture in it. 13 and a half. Would it burn today? Yep, absolutely. So today you go, good day to a fuel reduction burn. And we have to use these tool things like um, what degrees is the slope, which I can't remember what it was called. What was it? Topography. What? Topography. You can say it. Topography. The lay of the land. What's the number you see on the left hand side? It's 12. 12. 12 degrees. Good boy. Well done. Perfect. Righto. Who's next? And then our next big day out was a field trip to Hillsville Sanctuary behind the scenes with um, animals that and critters local to our area. And the kids got to actually meet keepers and, and ask questions about how animals cope in, in high fire risk weather. And we went in groups and saw the koalas and the kangaroos and, and the emus and the wombats. Oh, nothing. I said Wombats are the, the cutest. When she would be in the mum's pouch when she was walking, it's the same sort of movement, so they don't mind it. Jenna and Ruby here did dingoes and other people did other things. Yeah, and we also got to see the Birds of Prey show, which was really cool because birds flew over our heads. And Jess the Eagle. Yeah, and... Which is in our claymation movie. On those excursions, we use the information for our claymation and we use those different types of animals to be characters in the movie. In pre-production we um, drew, got a piece of paper and drew the scenes and the shots that we were going to do and we designed the characters like the wombat and the dad and the mum and stuff. Tell us about Will. He's really weird. We'd done some work with the kids with brigades in schools on fire danger ratings and it seemed logical to incorporate that into our um, claymation. So what happens is it's how they're living when the weather's getting hotter from low moderate to co red. So in the pre-production that's when we like make all the armatures, make up the story board, make all our characters. So first of all we had to start with a frame like a skeleton. And then after that we had to put clay over it and build it up. Making claymation stuff is really hard, but my character ended up looking very good. My character's the kangaroo. How's the wombat? What kind of possum you got? In the claymation I made Gem Gem. And Gem Gem's the main character, well, the narrator. This is, our, this is our cover for our television. Oh, I'm making them. Um, I made the eagle. I had a lot of help from one of the locals who came to help our school. Local people 
kids of all ages and stages come in and work with our kids on some of the behind the scenes tasks. Having a ball? Following directions. My role is a slave, which is all right, I'm used to that. And we're just about to launch into some actual animation. We used a green screen so we could edit the claymation figures onto images. So once you've put your creation on the green screen, you go to the computer and it'll say shot and you have to make sure every time you do it, you move it a little bit and not too much so it looks like it's going whoosh. For every second of film we made, we had to do take 12 pictures. It's important for kids living in bushy areas to do a program like this so we know what to do. We hope that um, the people that watch our CFA movie know that they need to be prepared before a fire and have a fire plan. We're very happy how it has turned out and what it looks like. We end up with a great end product with the claymation but we also end up with lots of kids learning about the different aspects that make up our fire danger ratings. With what our children have been covering through the, the, the weekly sessions with our outside experts, they've built up this incredible bank of, of knowledge for them to have that real understanding of how fire works and how they can live here safely and happily and confidently is priceless. <laughs> My <laughs> I feel so important that everyone wants to get your autograph. And hang on just a minute. Ah, uh, guys, we're filming. Thank you. We're free range here. <laughs> we're free range. <laughs>